Hi, I've generally avoided the topic of AI image generators on this channel, but I think it's something that I need to talk about. A, because it's been out long enough now where I actually have a good handle on what it can do and the impact that it's had, and B, because I've seen some very concerning things that people have been saying recently about the AI hype, you know, people saying that the industry won't exist in the next few years. I've actually had comments and emails from people asking me whether it's worth getting into VFX in general. So I just want to talk about the state of the industry in regards to AI, what impact it's actually having, and what impact I think it'll have in the future. If you've never seen this channel before, my name's Rob Dickinson. I was a concept artist and illustrator for a few years, and then about seven years ago, I switched over to visual effects. So I have quite a lot of experience in this field. So before we get started on that, I just want to take a second to talk about how AI art actually works. I feel like this is something AI artists and people in general probably just don't understand very well. It is very complex. You're going to have to forgive me here, but I'm going to use an analogy to describe how diffusion models work. So imagine that you have this guy, let's call him AI Draw. An AI Draw is not a very smart man, but he is good at recognizing patterns. He has this uncanny ability to just recognize patterns if you give him enough information. So you show him pictures every day, thousands of pictures, and you say, you describe everything that's in these pictures. So you say that's a ginger cat sitting on a green box. It's a photograph. This one is a painting, a realistic painting of an old man sitting on the beach at sunset. This is a Renaissance painting of a blonde girl in a red dress. And you describe all these things with thousands of images. And then after a few weeks of that, you say, AI draw, what are these images? Can you tell me which one of these is a Renaissance portrait? And it says, yes, this one, this one, and this one. And you say, well, how do you know that? And it says, well, in my head, I give Renaissance uh, paintings a score and the closer everything matches the score, like a, based on a pattern, is whether I decide whether that's acceptable or not to call a Renaissance painting. So you say, okay, well, that's a good skill to have. You can recognize a Renaissance painting. You can recognize a photograph. Here's a second skill. Uh, sit down at this computer with a drawing tablet in Photoshop. I'm going to give you some images, but this time I'm going to add some noise to them. I'm just going to mess up some of the pixels. Can you uh, put that right? Can you get rid of the noise? And the eye draw says, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. And at first it messes it up. It uses like purple paint for the skin tones. So you say, no, 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 this is the original. Look at this and then look at what you've done and compare it. It says, okay, I think I know what I've done wrong. So eventually it gets to the point where it can remove noise. This is how an AI denoiser works, right? We have this in Blender. Most of the 3D tools, you can give it a noisy render and it cleans it up and it does a fairly good job. So now AI Draw can take increasingly damaged images and he can repair them based on the training data that he's had. So eventually we get to the point where we can give him extremely damaged paintings. We can have tons of noise and we can say AI Draw fix. These are all Renaissance paintings. Can you fix them? They're very noisy. And at first, once again, he'll mess it up. Maybe the girl with the pearl earring, he gives her a face tattoo. The Mona Lisa gets big tits. But eventually you keep correcting him and he gets to the point where even a very damaged image, he'll kind of just make up the parts that are missing and he can repair it until in his head, he goes, yep, I recognize that as a Renaissance portrait. And then eventually we get to the point where you can literally just give him a load of noise, a canvas of noise and say, AI draw. In that picture, there is a woman in a red dress. Can you remove the noise until you recognize that as a painting of a woman in a red dress? And the Adro says, oh, I can't really see a woman there. And you say, oh no, you can look at the patterns and you'll figure it out. And eventually it starts looking at the random noise and just saying, well, maybe that's a face. And after a while of working on it, it says, here is my portrait of a woman in a black dress. Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh! Oh, Jesus! God! Oh, Mary, Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! And so that, in a nutshell, is how the whole thing works. You start off by stealing a load of images from the internet, and you add tags on all these images, and then you feed it into the AI until it's seen so many images of whatever it is that it just recognizes patterns that a human can't. There's something about a picture of a cat 
that the AI just recognizes because it's seen every cat picture, right? So when you ask it to draw a cat, it basically just has to rearrange pixels and denoise things until it recognizes it as a cat. It doesn't understand what a cat is. It doesn't have to. It just recognizes the pattern. Then to go back to our analogy, you say, okay, AI draw, you've drawn me this woman in a dress. Could you change this picture so that it matches a different genre or that it's in the style of a different artist? In AI draw says, I don't know, I'll give it a go. Okay, give me one more look at the painting. Before we move on to the impact that AI art is actually having on the industry, I just want to quickly say that my interior masterclass course just got a whole new module adding three hours of additional content. And to celebrate that, I've made a promo code 30 off. If you use the code 30 off at Gumroad, you save 30%. You can also save 20% on my essential topology guide using the code big 20. Right, so that's how AI art works, but is it a threat to the industry? Are we all going to be out of a job in three years' time? Well, from what I've seen, the answer is no. I haven't actually seen that much of an impact on the industry at all. I've been looking out for people talking about losing jobs to AI. I have a hell of a lot of friends in the industry, and I've been listening to what people have been saying. And while I've made a video recently about the dire situation that the VFX industry is in right now, very little of that seems to be anything to do with AI. Now, I'm sure some jobs have been uh, replaced by AI, especially the sort of thing that I used to do at the start of my career, like kind of low stakes, small illustration, local businesses who need uh, something made, maybe a calendar or something like that for a small business. I'm sure AI has been used for stuff like that. And I'm sure there's even been big productions that have used it here and there, but I'm just not seeing it being used in a particularly widespread way. And I think mostly that's because of how it actually works and certain problems that you get with using AI. So let's just go through some of that. Well, one of the first jobs that everybody always talks about is concept art. Why hire a concept artist when you can just type in, the art director can just type in what they want in a prompt. I want an alien with six arms and green skin, and it'll give you 50 different versions of that, right? Well, there's a lot of problems there. Number one, AI doesn't necessarily take directions very well. I was trying to get a character earlier on, uh, like a, a orc style character, not quite though, but like that sort of like monstrous thing. And any time I was putting in prompts that were kind of like that, it was giving me the typical uh, like Dungeons and Dragons style green skin, big muscular guy. And that's not what I was looking for at all. But there's so much of that content that it's been trained on. It's very hard to get it away from that. You try saying, no, give it blue skin. It doesn't like that. Or if it does, it gives it like bright blue skin. It looks terrible. Um, it doesn't take directions very well in that regard. It also isn't really capable of making the sort of small changes that an art director wants to be able to make. An art director wants to be able to go in and say, well, I like this, but how about you take this thing from that image and just add it over to here or make this slightly longer or something like that. It doesn't understand slightly longer because it doesn't really understand what it's drawn. It's just matched patterns based on what it's been trained on. So when you try to say, well, change this specific thing, it has trouble identifying what you're even talking about. There's a fantastic concept artist called Feng Zhu, who some of you might know. He's been in the industry for something like 25 years. He worked on Star Wars prequels and everything back in the day. He has a great YouTube channel called FCD School, which is where I learned concept art illustration. And he did a fantastic video a while back called something like what AI can't do where he went through from a professional concept artist point of view, all of the problems that he's encountered when looking at AI, like the things that it literally just cannot do that it needs to be able to do. If you're a large studio, you also have concerns about intellectual property. In fact, there's three distinct problems that you get regarding intellectual property. The first one is the fact that these tools were all trained on the data of artists like me who didn't agree to that and there's lawsuits going on at the moment regarding this that's not necessarily a problem for the studios using the tools more of the engineers who are making this stuff but it's still a concern b 
big studios don't really want the backlash of being known as the guys who used something that was found to be stealing. Secondly, there's the fact that the actual output that comes from these things can be stolen. Now, AI engineers call this overfitting, but I just call it copying. Basically, if it's been trained on something and it doesn't have much data about what that thing looks like, it can end up always outputting something that's very similar to the handful of things it was trained on. For instance, until recently, if you typed Afghan girl or something similar into like mid journey, it would give you an almost identical copy of the really famous Steve McCurry photo of the girl in Afghanistan, because that's basically all it's been trained on regarding Afghan girl. So you can't really risk that as a studio. You can't like use that for concept art and you create a superhero, let's say, and you put it out there and then everyone's like, wait a minute, that's just a copy of like Banana Man. When Eric eats the banana, an amazing transformation occurs. Banana man. Like, then you're going to get sued by whoever you've accidentally ripped off. The third concern for studios is that it's quite probable that any artwork that's made with AI tools, AI generated stuff is not actually copyrightable, right? Studios don't want to put stuff out there if they don't own the copyright. Now this matter hasn't been settled entirely, but we do have very similar legal cases that would imply that if a person wasn't involved directly in creating art, they don't own the copyright. For instance, there's a really famous selfie you've probably seen that was uh, taken by a monkey. And even though the photographer set up the camera, put in the role, did everything else, because a monkey took the picture, he didn't own the copyright. Technically no one owned the copyright because Copyrights can only be held by a human. So the same thing probably applies to AI. Just because you typed in the prompt or whatever, you were not actually the person who created that specific image or the design behind it. So it's most probable that any studio that uses AI either directly to create images or to create a design probably doesn't own the intellectual property anyway. Another problem that I'm seeing with AI comes in terms of consistency. It's very hard to get AI to churn out the same thing multiple times, right? It can potentially give you a picture of a woman. If you say I want a, a picture or a video of a beautiful blonde woman who looks a bit like Marilyn Monroe and it's black and white and it's in the 60s, it can be like, yeah, I can do that. But then you ask for the same character in a different shot and all of a sudden her dress will be a bit different. Her face is a bit different. The hair is off. Even within the same shot, I've seen, especially AI-generated video, where the camera pans to one side, and then when it pans back, you're looking at an entirely different thing. Can you remember that uh, the Old Spice commercial where like everything was constantly changing in the background and stuff as the camera moved? It's like that. Like AI has no consistency because it doesn't understand what it's actually drawing. It doesn't understand the render. Therefore, it can't be consistent about what it's putting out. A good example of that is the Toys R Us advert that you might have seen came out about a month or two ago. They had a little boy in there. And if you look from shot to shot, it's a different boy. He looks different in the face. He has a different haircut. He has different glasses. He's wearing like a flannel shirt, kind of like this, but the pattern changes on every single shot. There's no consistency there. So you can't say that you can possibly make a movie where like the actor is going to look different in every shot. And until that's something that can be solved, which with current models, I don't really think it can be, then that's just basically useless. And of course, one of the other problems that you have with AI comes in terms of quality. What it outputs is quite often shit. Now, not always. I'm not one of these people who pretends that all AI images are all just trash because I don't like it, because they're not. I've seen some stuff that I actually think is quite good. It's been trained on a lot of good artwork. I think some of it looks fairly beautiful. If you put some of this artwork out there four years ago on Twitter before all this AI stuff, some of it would get 100,000 likes, I'm sure. However, a lot of it just sucks. And even the stuff that are passable at the start, when you break it down, you start realizing how much nonsense is actually going on. For instance, it doesn't really understand form, right? This is kind of leading back to our concept art thing. Uh, it doesn't understand the actual shape of things. So it can maybe make you a robot, but then 
the pieces won't actually connect in the way that they properly should because it just it thinks well this is the shape of a robot based on what i've seen but it doesn't understand the mechanics behind like how a motor works or how a joint works or something like that and in a similar sense it doesn't really understand humans humans especially because you know a a can of coke looks the same in every picture but a human right like we move a lot we change we're different same with bicycles i've noticed it doesn't do a good job with bicycles that Toys R Us advert, actually, I noticed in the background, there's a bicycle shop and you can only ever see like parts of wheels and things. You can never see a full bike because it doesn't know how to draw them. They're always different shapes and they look very strange. It can't do fingers very well. A lot of the time people have too many limbs or not enough limbs. Um, faces, it kind of gets confused sometimes and it gives everybody the same face. You can render out a group shot and it looks all right at first. And then you're like, hang on, are these all like this? Is triplets why do they all look the same because it just gets confused and it thinks oh well this is the face i most associate with these tags therefore everybody gets that face when it comes to details as well and this is another problem for concept art they're usually non-existent it will let's say you ask it to make a a, a gnome's house right and there's like shelves on the background or whatever well if you look at the actual objects on the shelf in the background 90 percent of the time it'll just be kind of nonsense it'll look kind of like jars and cups and things but actually when you get up close it's just kind of a load of squiggles same as if you say like give me a render of a like a cyberpunk like somebody sort of lab in their house where they've got monitors and screens and things if you actually look at any of the equipment, it'll just be kind of black boxes with like a few little squiggles on it to make it look like there's something there. But really, there's no detail. There's nothing you could give to a 3D artist and say, OK, model this. They would just be like, well, it's it's junk. There's nothing actually concrete here. You give me the impression of a scene. You give me the impression of detail without actually rendering out what you want to see. So what do I think AI as it stands is actually useful for AI image generation? Well, I've tried to figure out if there's any way I can fit into my workflow. And for the most part, the answer has been no. There's only really two things that I found it kind of useful for. Number one is when you need some something that looks kind of intentional and designed, but it isn't important. I'm talking if you have like a, a, a back alley scene and you need like 50 posters for strip clubs and nightclubs and bars and bands that are playing. You don't want to really go into Photoshop and like individually create them all. It can be good for that sort of stuff. Brand packaging, photographs. If you want like 50 photographs on the wall of a family, you can just say, give me a load of photographs. Asian family on a beach they're black and white and then give you loads of those and if it's tiny on a screen who cares right it just needs to give you the impression that there's something there it's not worth spending your time making all that stuff necessarily if you're someone like me where you're trying to do everything by yourself that can be a nice little time saver the other thing that i've found it kind of useful for is very very early shot design like i wouldn't even call this concept art in concept art it's something that we call like a thumb or a comp like where you make a tiny little sketch image which is basically just the initial composition and the color scheme so you can if let's say you want you want to make a shot with a castle and a bridge you can say um give me a castle and a bridge magic hour lighting uh next to a lake and give me 50 of those and they're all just tiny resolution like half an image and you can look at loads of them on the screen at once and say well this one this one this one kind of give me an idea of where i might want to take the shot but other than that frankly i haven't found much use for it i think possibly in the future it might be useful for generating image textures as well these tools do exist at the moment but they're not very good I can see us getting to the point eventually though where you can just type in give me a seamless PBR texture of limestone or or cobblestone floor and that'll work quite well at the moment. Not what I've seen basically. Um, but yeah, the takeaway that I want everyone to have from this video is it's not having a huge effect right now and due to the fundamental nature of how it works, I don't really think it's going to in the future. I don't think we're going to see huge layoffs. I don't think we're going to see 
the likes of ILM and Framestore, like massively getting rid of artists to bring in a lot of AI stuff. I can't see it being utilized on a large scale as it is right now. Maybe if they make changes to it in the future or a fundamental new algorithm comes out, maybe I'll be saying something different. But as it stands right now, if you want to start working with VFX, go for it. Don't let this AI stuff put you off. If you do want to start using AI and you're worried about it from like the point of view of not using art that has been trained on like professionals like my work or whatever, or other people's work, one thing you might want to actually look into very ironically is Adobe's, I think it's called Adobe Firefly, their own AI. Weirdly, that's probably the most ethical one out there. It's all been trained on Adobe stock that they've paid for. Uh, not because of any like ethical concerns, just because they're worried about the legal ramifications and they've already paid for this data anyway, so that's what they've trained theirs on. So this video turned out to be a little bit longer than I expected, but hopefully I've given you a good idea of the state of AI art as it stands at the moment. If you didn't understand anything about AI art before, hopefully now you do. Remember to use the code 30 off to save 30% on the interior masterclass at Gumroad, including a whole new module, and you can save 20% on the essential topology guide using the code BIG20. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in a few days with another video.